Okay, this is another one we want to do a graph. If something looks like it can be factored, you always want to begin by factoring top and bottom first before you fill this information. As we showed before, it's possible that you might be able to cancel something out and then that's going to affect your answers uh, for these here. So I'm going to first begin by just doing a factoring step. On top, we can pull out a 2x would be a common factor for both of those and you would get x plus 2 left as a result. So again, if you always want, you can always check your factoring by multiplying back through. You should get the same thing you started with on top, so that would be factored correctly. On the bottom, we're going to do the same thing, only this time we're going to have x and x. Factors of 15 would be 3 and 5. Uh, you want to get uh, a positive 2, so we're going to do a plus 5 and we're going to do a minus 3. So that way you get positive 5x minus 3 will give you the positive 2, and the negative 3 and 5 is going to give you negative 15, so this one works out as well. So nothing cancels, so if nothing cancels, that's fine, then we just go ahead and move on to these different steps here. Okay, so first we want to find the x-intercept, x-intercept to top equals 0. We have 2x times x plus 2, that's going to equal 0. And then when we solve for it, we get x is equal to 0 and negative 2. That's what makes both of these individually equal to 0. So 0 and negative 2 will be your two x-intercepts. Next, we want to find the y-intercept. Y-intercept is where you put in a 0 for x. Now, if we already have a 0 for one of the x-intercepts, we know that automatically there's going to be a 0 for the y-intercept as well. That's because if I put a 0 in the original equation, and I, even if I put it here, it doesn't matter. That means I get a 0 for the top one. So because I get 0 on top, that means that the whole thing is going to cancel out and give me 0. This whole thing is a 0 on top and I get negative 15 on the bottom. That means the whole thing is going to be equal to 0, so therefore I get a 0 for that. But whenever you see a 0 for your x-intercept, you're always going to have a 0 for the y-intercept as well because it's going to cross through 0, 0. For the vertical asymptote, the VA will do that right here. Vertical asymptote, that's where you're going to set the bottom one equal to 0 is always your rule. So x minus 3, x plus 5, that's going to equal 0. When you solve for it, you get x is equal to 3 and you get x is equal to negative 5. So here x is equal to 3, x equals negative 5. Those are your two vertical asymptotes. We have the x equals in there, completes the equation. So that would be your answer there. The last one we're going to look at is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so horizontal asymptote is where we look at the rules. And the, it's always good to use the original one, the non-factored one, because that way you can tell what the highest power, the top and bottom are going to be. In this case, the highest power on top, which is 2, that's your n, that does equal the highest power on the bottom because you have a square down there as well. So n equals m, that's your rule number 2 uh, for your horizontal asymptote rules. So because these are both the same, that means that you're going to divide the leading numbers here, the leading coefficients. The 2 would be the number in front of the x squared there. We're going to take that 2 and we're dividing it by the number in front of the x squared on the bottom. That would be a 1. So therefore y equals 2, that's the equation for your horizontal asymptote. We have all this complete and once we get this complete we're now ready to do the graph. So I'm going to clear the board and we're going to now draw the graph. So when you draw the graph, we're going to put dotted lines in for your asymptotes and we'll plot the intercepts that you have. So first we'll start with that. We have 0 goes through 0, 0 and negative 2, it'll cross there. So there's our two only x-intercepts, just these two there. Then I have, uh, I have a vertical asymptote at negative 5. I have another one at 3, so these are my two vertical asymptotes. My y uh, asymptote is 2, and so I have, I have it going like this. Okay, so here's my, so everything is all laid out. I have my, my two verticals. I have my horizontal going through at 2. I have my two intercepts that I've already plotted. So now we're, we're ready to start graphing it. Now the previous example, if you looked at that previous one, we had to pick test points on the ends here to determine whether the graph is drawn above or it's drawn below. This one actually you don't have to do test points. The graph itself actually gives us enough information to tell that. So for instance, let's suppose that the graph was 
drawn like this. We know it's going to be drawn either down below or up above. We don't know which one yet. But let's suppose that we decide to draw our graph like this. Now that wouldn't be correct and the reason why is because the graph you notice right here, that's crossing the x-axis. If it crosses the x-axis then we must have another answer here for your x-intercept. But when we did the algebra, the x-intercept said that we only have these two places where it crosses. So because of that, what that tells me is it tells me that the graph cannot be drawn this way because if it did, we'd have to have another intercept there. We'd have another number. Maybe we would have negative 6 there for one of our other numbers that would be here. We don't have that. So because of it, that says that the graph actually does not cross anywhere. So we can assume because of that reason that there's no graph that crosses down below, which means the only possibility would be the graph has to be drawn, drawn above like that. The same reason can be used for this side. Again, I, the graph is not going to be drawn below like that because if it did, again, I'd have another intercept somewhere out here that would show up in my algebra. So because I didn't have that, that means, again, the graph only must be drawn above like this. So I've now I've taken care of the two end pieces. So now I needed to figure out the middle part. Now the middle part, I told you earlier, we have, I'll put them down here. These are the, the different shapes that you could have that would go in between your vertical asymptotes. We have the two parabola shaped ones or you have the ones that look like the x cube graphs. So I know for sure I can eliminate the two n ones. The two cube graphs would be a no because I have two places where it's crossing the x-axis and these shapes would only cross the x-axis at one spot. So I know for sure the two end ones are out. Now the last two, it actually could be either one. The graph could either come down, hit this one, and come up like that, or it could come up from the bottom and, and do that as well. I don't know for sure which one it is until I do a test point to confirm it. Now you, you need to pick a test point anywhere in between these two verticals. I can, I can choose any of the numbers along here. Of course, I don't want to pick my x-intercepts because I know I'm going to get zero, so that's not going to tell me anything. I want to pick any other point in here besides the x-intercepts. So any one doesn't matter. I'll use the one right in between. You don't have to use that one. You could use any ones here or there. It doesn't matter, but I'll just do a test point. I'm going to let x equal negative one. Negative one I'm going to put into the I can either use the, the factored version or the original. I'll just use the factored version. So I have 2 times negative 1, negative 1 plus 2. On the bottom I have negative 1 minus 3, and then I have negative 1 plus 5. I'm putting negative 1 in there for all the x's into this one. And I want to simplify it and get a y value, and now I have a point that I can plot somewhere in there. On top I get negative 2 for this part times 1, so I get negative 2 on top, the bottom one. This is negative 4. And this is 4. When I multiply those, I get negative 16. When I simplify it, I get 1 eighth, which means the point that's going to be on the graph itself is going to be negative 1 and 1 eighth. So if I plot that, negative 1 and 1 eighth would be about right here. So that tells me now that the graph must be curving down, which means that this is the correct shape that I'm going to have in the middle. It's going to follow the vertical one here. It's going to go through these three points, curve back down again, and follow the other vertical asymptote. So then this would be your uh, completed graph. So again, uh, we only needed to use one test point here. We did not need any on the outside. So it all depends on the equation that you have. Sometimes the graph is nice enough to where it'll give you enough information to not have to use test points. We only had to do one in this case. Or sometimes you may have to do a, a bunch of different test points. It all determines uh, what the graph is originally giving you, what information is provided. Sometimes uh, you might have to use more test points.